Hello dear friends and a warm welcome. This lecture is about carbon cycle. It is a part of nutrient cycling also known as biogeochemical cycle. This lecture is important for the students who are preparing for the NEET exam. It is a topic in the BSc and MSc courses, the subject ecology. It is also a topic in the syllabus of the exam, UGC, CSI and NET exam and also important for the GATE life sciences exam. So watch this video till end. Myself, Dr. Tripti Malika Huja. I am your tutor and mentor for the subject biology, microbiology and life sciences. In the playlist you will find there are similar video lectures. There are also multiple choice questions. The solutions of previous year question paper and quizzes which will help you in the preparation of different entrance exam and competitive exams. First of all, in the case of the subject biology, when we are saying the cycle, what do we mean by a cycle? Here we are talking for a particular nutrient or an element which is important for life. This nutrient or the element it is present in the environment say it is the nutrient X. It is passing through one or more organism that can be plants, that can be animal and then it is coming back to the environment so a cycle is continued. Here you can see a carbon cycle. The vehicle for the carbon cycle is carbon dioxide. The carbon dioxide is getting produced when the animals and the plants respire and then it is taken up by the plants. So carbon is getting cycled in the environment by the means of the respiration and photosynthesis. So that is an example of the word cycle. These are also called biogeochemical cycle. The other names are the nutrient cycle, element cycle and the mineral cycle. All the elements which are important for life, that means they are present in the living organism, the plants or the animals or the microorganism, they undergo cycling. The cycle occurs through abiotic and biotic components of biosphere. Now let's understand what we mean by this abiotic, biotic and biosphere. When we say biosphere, then the biosphere means all the life present on the earth. The abiotic components, these are the non-living components like it includes the soil, it includes the water and the air. The biotic component means it includes the plants, it includes the animals and it includes the microorganisms, the microbes. The examples of biogeochemical cycles are the carbon cycle. We will study this carbon cycle in this lecture in detail. The other examples are the nitrogen cycle, phosphorus cycle and the sulfur cycle. These cycles we will study in the upcoming video lectures. First of all, when we say the biogeochemical cycle, then these are of different type. The first type is the sedimentary cycle. In the case of sedimentary cycle, the major reservoir is lithosphere, that means the soil. Now let's see what is the meaning of the word reservoir. Reservoir means a particular reserve, a stock of the mineral where it is kept stored. It will get used up and then will come back to the same reservoir. The examples of the sedimentary cycles are the elements which are present in the rocks and they come into the soil by the process of weathering. The phosphorus and sulfur, these are the sedimentary cycle. Second type, gaseous cycle. In gaseous cycle, the atmosphere is the reservoir. Example are the carbon cycle and the nitrogen cycle. There is a general model of nutrient cycle. It is applicable to all the nutrient. According to the model, there should be reservoirs and there should be the processes, the processes which lead to the cycling. They are responsible for the cycling of the nutrients. 
Now, there are different types of reservoirs. Reservoirs are classified according to their nature, whether they are organic or they are inorganic, whether they are available for the use by the organisms or these are unavailable for the use. So, in this figure, you can see there are four types of the reservoir A, B, C, and D. The type A reservoir, these are organic in nature and these are available as nutrients. The example are living organism, detritus. Detritus means the dead living organism, the dead of the plant and the animal or the microorganism. The type B reservoir, again these are organic but these are not available for the use as nutrient. Example are the fossil fuel, coal, peat and oil. The type A can get converted to the type B by the process of fossilization. Fossilization means when the plants and the animals they die, then they get decomposed, they get decayed, they get converted to the fossil fuels over millions of years, they get deposited in the earth crust and then there are changes of the heat and pressure and they get converted to the fossils. The type C reservoir, these are inorganic in nature and these are available as nutrient. Re examples are the atmosphere, soil and water. The type A and type C, they can get interconverted to each other. The type A gets converted to the type C by the process of the respiration, decomposition and excretion which happens in all the living organisms. The type C can get converted to the type A by the process of assimilation and the photosynthesis. The fourth type are the reservoir D. Here, the minerals are the inorganic form and they are again unavailable as the nutrient. These are the minerals which are trapped in the rocks. Type C get converted to the type D by the formation of sedimentary rocks when there are the deposits of the materials, dust particles and other minerals which get deposited in the layers they form the sedimentary rock. The type D which are the rocks having the minerals they can get converted to the type C by the weathering and the erosion. Now we will study this carbon cycle in detail. You should be knowing all the details of the carbon cycle. First of all, the carbon can be available in the organic form or in the inorganic form. In the organic form, the form is the methane or it can be the carbohydrate. In the inorganic form, there is a carbon dioxide which is present in the air. The air contains 0.03% of the carbon dioxide in a normal situation. Then there is calcium carbonate, CaCO3 present as limestone and chalks. In addition to this, there is also the carbonic acid which is present in the aquatic environment, in the oceans and in the marine environment. Then there are the fossil fuels which are again present in the earth crust and there is also the dead organic matter. So these are different forms of the carbon which are present. Now we will see what are different carbon reservoirs. This figure is showing different carbon reservoir. The first reservoir is the atmosphere which contains the carbon dioxide. Then biosphere, the biosphere, the biomass which includes the plants and the animals and the freshwater systems and the non-living materials such as the soil that is present also as the reservoir. The ocean, they also contain the carbon. They contain the dissolved inorganic carbon in the form of the carbonic acid and they also contain the aquatic biomass, the living and the non-living marine biota. Lithosphere which includes the soil, sediments, earth core it also, and the fossil fuels, it is also a reservoir for the carbon. 
the carbon cycle is predominantly a gaseous cycle so it is occurring in the form of the co2 it is getting cycled as a vehicle is the carbon dioxide which is getting cycled between the biotic and the abiotic components the major reservoir we have just studied the major reservoir is in the atmosphere which is the carbon dioxide which is getting cycled although the largest reservoir is a sedimentary rock in the form of limestone but this pool turns over very slowly so the carbon cycle is not occurring majorly in the lithosphere but it is occurring majorly in the atmosphere the photosynthesis and respiration these are the two processes which are occurring in opposition and they are responsible for the global carbon cycle now let's see this figure you will be i will be explaining this figure in a very simple manner so there is an aquatic carbon cycle and this atmospheric carbon cycle they are going side by side atmospheric in the atmosphere aquatic in the water systems the major reservoir is the carbon dioxide reservoir present in the atmosphere the producers which are the plants they take up this carbon dioxide they carry out the process of photosynthesis they prepare the carbohydrates then there is the fixation of the carbon we can see the carbon from the atmosphere it is in the form of carbon dioxide it is coming in the biotic component by the means of the photosynthesis then it can from the plants it can go to the consumers and when the plants consumer which are the animals they respire they get burned then this carbon dioxide again comes in the environment in the aquatic system there is a similar photosynthesis so the carbon dioxide gets fixed in the aquatic plants they can be eaten up by the animals and when they get respire then this carbon dioxide is coming back into the atmosphere in addition to these there are the fossil fuels which are when burnt they will release the carbon dioxide when the organic matter decays it will again decompose and liberating the carbon dioxide in the environment now we will see a simple food chain how the carbon enters into the food chain how the carbon enters into the living system so first of all there are the plants which are the first trophic level these are the producers so they synthesize the food they take up the carbon dioxide from the atmosphere they carry out photosynthesis the carbon dioxide and the water they are taken in the presence of the chlorophyll and the sunlight it gets converted to the carbohydrate then this plant is eaten up by the herbivore this we can say this is the primary consumer so this is the next trophic level which are the consumer so carbon which was produced in the plant it enters into the animals the herbivore the primary consumer now the carbon is entering into the next trophic level this herbivore is eaten up by a bigger animal so that animal will be the secondary consumer it will be a carnivore so the carbon which was present in the small animal the herbivore the primary consumer now it has entered into the secondary consumer so this is how the carbon enters into a food chain after this when the plant dies this plant dies or the primary consumer the secondary consumer or the tertiary consumers they die then the all the carbon they come back again into the soil or when these respire the plant respires the primary consumer the secondary consumer the animals respire then this carbon dioxide is coming back into the air so this is how the carbon cycle can be explained in a very simple manner Uh, so carbon dioxide it is produced in the atmosphere by the organisms which are called the photoautotrophs these are the plants 
if we are talking about the terrestrial environment so they are using the carbon dioxide they carry out the photosynthesis these can be the phytoplanktons the small aquatic animals or these can be the algae which are using the dissolved carbonates present in the water to carry out the photosynthesis and they make the organic carbon compounds for example the glucose then there are again some organisms which are called chemoautotrophs these are the bacteria and these are the archaea bacteria which convert the carbon from the carbon dioxide into an organic form but the difference is that when they take the energy they don't take the energy from the sunlight but they take the, they take the energy through the oxidation of the other molecules so that's why they are called chemoautotrophs the decomposition of the dead organic matter also releases the carbon back into the environment in the atmosphere so this is how the carbon dioxide is produced by decomposition when the fossil fuels burn they also release the carbon dioxide the eruption of volcanoes also gives rise to the production of carbon dioxide there is also an oceanic carbon cycle the oceanic carbon cycle it is carried out mainly by the aquatic photosynthesis the photosynthesis which is carried by the phytoplanktons and the aquatic algae there can be the formation of calcium carbonate as the rocks and also the corals which are present in the marine environment when the limestone these rocks and the chalks they break then they can release the bicarbonate in the water the carbon dioxide it is dissolved in the water and it also produces the carbonic acid so this is how the oceanic life like carbon cycle is getting on then the ocean they act like the sink of the carbon dioxide also now when the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere it increases then as the carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas so it can lead to the global warming there are certain oceans which absorb this excess of the carbon dioxide and they act like the sink of carbon dioxide then the fossil fuels they are also prepared in the oceans as the coal crude oil or the natural gas from the aquatic dead plants and the animals over millions of years so this is a simple representation and now i am giving you summary of the carbon cycle so carbon is getting cycled in the form of the carbon dioxide this is the vehicle it is taken up by the plants plants carry out photosynthesis and they prepare the organic carbon as the carbohydrates then this organic carbon as the plant is eaten by the animals this carbon enters into the animals when the animals they respire they give back to the carbon dioxide this plants they also respire they give back the carbon dioxide when the plants and the animals they die then their bodies they get converted into the fossils and the fossil fuels the dead and decaying process also releases the carbon dioxide in the environment in addition to this there are the industrial processes like the emission from the factories they can be the uh, uh, eruption of the volcanoes or the burning of the fossil and the fossil fuels it also releases the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere hence the carbon cycle is continued so that was the carbon cycle in a simple manner hope it will help in your studies if you like the channel then do subscribe it and share this video with your friends stay tuned for other helpful videos thanks a lot